being in the Spanish culture, that's the, you know, you don't want, I'm like, man, I'm getting bad juju for this, man. Stepping on people's graves, you oh know. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and and <laughs> Curve, Acura, and Temper, they ran, they did the smart thing. They ran across the, the, all the other expressways so they couldn't get to them. But I remember the cops when came out with their guns drawn, chasing myself and Nike back towards the towards the cemetery and they're like freeze motherfucker you're dead motherfucker you're dead motherfucker and then i'm like they ain't shooting they ain't shooting so i'm just fucking running running next do you know they jumped two two cops grabbed nike it was like pitch dark i could see and they were roughing them up i jumped on a gravestone maybe 20 20 yards ahead of him i jumped in a pine tree and i saw them they were roughing them up wow. and it was i was like fuck all i could my stomach dropped the adrenaline, I'm like, I had a parka with the fur on it. Yeah. Green. Yeah, I was up in the tree. I was just hiding. And then for like an hour, they were combing the whole fucking place. And they were like, <laughs> they were just like, I was like, man, I'm like, oh, my mom's going to beat my ass. That's all I could. That's all I would have like, man, and my dad, they're going to fuck, dude. podcast. <laughs> KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Yo, Nolan Poland Records for underground classics. NolanPolandRecords.com Box created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Yes, yes, yes. Killer Keller Podcast live and direct. Central London or essential as you need to be. Choose to be wannabe. Big shout to pirate.com. 24-7 music podcasts and dance studios all across the UK. Hold tight. Strainstation.co.uk. And of course, noelpolandrecords.com for all the bangers all right um anyone that's got a television app you know what it is free download iphone android for the sport in art street culture all the athleticism that you have in your life and a free handy dandy save your ass downloadable app <clears throat> television we are not staying in this area of the world we're heading straight over to the atlantic the other side of it into uh into Chai Town territory, I am absolutely stoked to announce this. To have somebody, not only a legacy holder from 1986 onwards, but a gentleman that is so gracious on introduction when we first connected via the T Kid podcast, he was like, Yo, we've got a lot of things in common. I just saw the book that's in the top left hand corner of your screen. That's my boy, Upski, Chicago, hold tight. TMB, TMS, SAW, KYM, you name it, he's got it. He'll dial in on the letters. Hold tight, empty inside the place. What's good, my brother? How you doing, brother? I'm honored. I'm honored to finally be on the show. How's it going, man? Uh, well, it's going. I just, uh, raising an eight month year old son, Archer, shout out to him and his lovely mother, Jackie. So, so with that being said, my graffiti's taken. I have to find balance, but I just painted yesterday a commemorative piece for a fallen uh, crewmate of ours that passed away in 2009, Afro 42. He's a big legacy, and he was like third, fourth generation Chicago graffiti. Trains, walls, rooftops, you name it, lines, and even commission work. Wow. Rest in peace, for real, for real. Um, it's hard when a, when a soldier goes down, right? Um, a friend of mine more recently has as well. Um, rest in peace, tease. Um, yeah, there's not a lot of it, time's the healer, but you kind of don't want time to move on, do you? Yeah, all we could do is commemorate their memory, talk about them, and and that's how they stay alive, you know? Yeah, for real, for real. Um, Chicago, in my mind anyway, as mentioned at the top of the show, MT, is, uh, is this book. For those that are you are uh, um, listening and are watching, you know, my, my studio setup has um, decor of a, of a street culture um, tapestry. And uh, to the top left is a favourite book of mine. And this is kind of where we started conversating. Next thing, we're just passing off 
Netflix videos, you name it. We just got into it, brother, right? <laughs> but yeah, this was yeah. a this was a seminal book for me, and I know you it holds very dear to your heart as well. Yeah, she's a Chicago like first zine to commemorate the hip hop culture. But I personally knew Upski too growing up. You know, he was a very mysterious uh name, persona. You know, not too many people brushed shoulders with him as he liked it. You know, he was he was to himself, but he always had a big voice. And I haven't spoke to him in years. So for for me to watch the T Kid podcast and then see the book, I mean, the the, the covers embedded in my brain. You know, mm-hmm. and the story. I know a bunch of people in the in the stories that are in it. So you know, big big shout out to Upski for putting Chicago on the map and and for all these years later to see it on your poster board there and, you know, giving it homage was, you know, it, it hit deep, it hit home, so to speak, because Chicago's complicated, you know, and mm. we don't really have much stories of the scene. So, you know, I'm truly honored that I hope that I could, you know, enlighten you on a little bit of the Chicago of what I've seen and, and, and witnessed and, and lived, you know. For real. Uh, The book, for those who don't know, is Upski's seminal Bomb the Suburbs. And from what I understand, I mean, it's a very it's a very politically charged book or one that that is the one that is very much in line with graffiti theory and um, principles, but then adapting it into, you know, the political landscape of its time and I, I correct me if I'm wrong but I, I seem to have been t- someone someone mentioned to it maybe it's actually my boy Sykes told me that apparently it was Tupac's go-to book in jail which blows my mind yeah that blew my mind too you know I'd, I'd like to I know Upski just recently got interviewed uh, for a, a documentary that's being um, still being made I hope I didn't let the uh, secret cat out of the bag but you know if I, i'm going to try to get a hold of the documenters to see if maybe we could connect used to and I, I have to share the story about the book how it's you know what brings us all meshed together the book's still impacting and we you and i met through it you know basically. yeah for real where did it begin for you brother i mean how did how did that connect with upski and of course your career from 86 onwards when how, how did how did this all come about how 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 was MT, how did he begin? Where did it start, brother? I was just brainstorming, you know, because it's my first time being honest on uh, doing a podcast. So I was a little nervous and hesitant because, you know, it's like I'm not ready to tell the story yet. So I'm still living it. Mm-hmm. But I, I could, you know, briefly tap in a little bit. I started, it started for me when I was my grandfather's uh, remote control, watching a Zenith TV flipping through the channels and it'd make a little noise like <laughs> well he'd go to the washroom i'd change the channels but one time he caught me hey what are you doing and he turned the channel slow you're gonna mess up that tv now <laughs> <You know? laughs> so like the second time he'd go to the washroom and i didn't i was doing it slow so he wouldn't hear me next thing you know pbs channel 11 and i'm seeing i think uh the first person i saw was men one talking about all going all city and hitting all wow. lines and then i was seeing these cartoons on trains and stuff and comics and i was like what is it like what are they talking about what is this language mm-hmm. it, it intrigued me right from the start you know as as it probably did for others so fast forward to that Star Wars, and i just kept seeing it in other tv shows like uh, welcome back cotter i see i was like I was putting, connecting the dots. Mm-hmm. The paint train that comes in on the intro on Welcome Back, Cotter. That intrigued me. Then I would see Saturday Night Live uh, movie. We saw the, the tags and stuff. And then, you know, Chicago also, <laughs> with being parallel growing up, in the, you know, we immigrated to a, a sector uh, called Back of the Yards. And that was in the, like, mid-'80s. Mm-hmm. And there was always gang graffiti in Chicago. There was always some kind of writings on the walls, and you know. But this time with the with the Star Wars, it was a bit different. It was like it 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 took the ugly nature away from it. I didn't see the the vandalism part of it. I seen it the art, the 
the characters, the, the, the pieces. And, you know, as, as two, two, two more years went by, I'm like 13 mm-hmm. years old. And I started associating it with, okay, this is graffiti art, you know, subway art came out. And from there, I was just scrawling, you know, a toy. I was a toy for six, seven years. I don't, I don't from, I would say I started writing, you know, dabbling with the tagging on the books, 84. Mm-hmm. You know, I was tagging for 10 years as a kid in the alleys on on mailboxes in school, you know, and it wasn't it wasn't too far after that that I went to high school mm-hmm. and then I was a paper king. So, I was, you know, I could do any name. I now I could do little styles. You know, everyone so bites sick. themselves apart, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, I remember this one one older gentleman he was over my shoulder because i could take everybody out at the lunch table and say a name that say a name and we battle you know we battle i write oh yeah no reek did it that was my first name reek did it better and then and then and then he was over my shoulder just to put to put an end to the story he rolled over my shoulder and he was like he's like oh you're a king huh and i'm like yeah yeah style king you know he's like yeah baby you know what good is it if it's on paper you're a toy you're toy king and then I was like, what? He's like, yeah, what good is it? You never transferred to the wall. And I was like, what? My whole heart was just crushed. My ego, everything. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Kids are ruthless as well. They say what they mean. I mean you mean they do it. They they serve it to you, too. Oh, man, they serve that dish cold, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> but look what it did. It created a monster. and And then throughout that time period this is i mean I, I think people get the wrong idea about being a toy like you have to start get was it bob marley said start somewhere or get nowhere right true, true i like that i never heard that one it's the truth um talk to me about the landscape of chicago of that time was it was it a case that particularly for graffiti but more hip-hop in general was it as was it as much an influx like a like a a the, a, a viral experience like it may have been for like Philadelphia or New York of its time which was it like explosive um it was the you know being in the midwest we always felt like we were always looked upon we always got everything last you know because it would be the east coast and the west coast they always talked about they never really talked about the midwest too much you know as we now we're getting our shine and stuff but back then to try to look back at the climate the way it was the landscape you know, they they fed us little bits of hip hop, you know, meaning that for you had to go to hip hop, you know, look back, looking back at it now as a kid, you know, uh, you see a Burger King commercial, some break dancing. I'm like, oh, people like us, because, you know, they'd always have the little mm-hmm. breaking going in that or in a music video and I'd have to record the music midi- video. So, yeah. you know, there wasn't a lot of hip hop. It was just certain genres, you know, rock and roll. Uh, stuff like that you know until my later teens then you have uh hip house which is a mix of like dance music with hip-hop yeah which was huge in chicago yeah house music was you know invented here in chicago so we even break dance to hip house you know back then it was dancing hip it's like hip-hop with with dance music kind of you know yeah that's amazing I i think that's where chicago footwork originated from you know it's like it was like top rocking but you know, doing like they do now, the footwork they call it Chicago footwork. If you look it up, iconic, iconic for the Midwest for real. Yeah. I- so that being said, um, there was only a few pieces because you know I was South Side. I lived on the South Side. There was graffiti going on all city. You know, looking mm-hmm. back now, everyone's sharing their, their their pictures and and whatnot. But, you know, when I'm 12, 13, I'm not going to the north side. I'm not going to. So anything I saw on the south side, um, there was a few pieces and I would have to take pictures of it. And then my stepdad, if he saw pictures of graffiti, he'd rip it up. Then I have to go back and hope that the piece is still there. There was a couple of three iconic pieces that I remember that I looked up to and I try to copy them, you know. Who was, who were they? Who were the, who were the, uh, the kings of their One, day? The Oracle. Who's still who's an artist today? He was in moved to San Francisco, and then came back. He did a uh, he he made a big mark across the landscape. 
And another one, his name was Wiz. Wiz, the kid, they were battling on top of these two bridge viaducts. So it was like it was like a whole month. The pieces would change. He'd come, they rag it, then they were battling, and the next year, yeah, the pieces they were just you would hear like they're battling. Oh, well, what what it was is Oracle called out one of my mentors, which is Gabriel the Wiz kid. Cause I was I was a uh, break dancing shorty with them, but he was copying the styles from Subway Art because he had the, the Subway Art, and then they called him out on it. He was a good artist; he could transfer to the wall. But at the end, if you're not original, you know what I mean, you're not going to yeah. last in this place. They're going to call you out. So he eventually diminished. You know, he kind of, you know, if he was like he he. he he uh, collapsed his career, so to speak, you know. <laughs> Just through faking it, faking the, uh, faking yeah, the style. Faking it, right, yeah. So, like, yo, man, that ain't even your stuff, man. You know, you, you got to change it, you know. Being mentored back then with different different people, you always, they, they give you an outline or something. Got to change it up, you know what I'm saying? Got to add your flavor, your own spices to it. Yeah, that's the thing. And just going back to the whole toy, the, the whole toy analogy, it's like, when someone gives you the sketches, the intention isn't to replicate it exactly. It's almost like, I don't think you could ever replicate it exactly, but it's more like trying to find your own direction, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like if you, I, I'd hope for you to share a recipe, you know, a London, a London recipe to me, and then I could, you know, add my own little flavor to it, but. You know, some people back then, people just try to copy it. You know, different writers would be like just copying it for exactly, you know, that's just, you know, I always knew anything handed to me, I always try to change it up, you know. I think it's super important, isn't it? Um, One thing that Chicago, to my understanding, especially from the Bomb the Suburbs book, Hold Tight Up Ski Again, is, is the idea of, and this is seems very unique to Chicago, is you know the whole idea of going up, you know the the bridges, the rooftops. You know this was this was, correct me if I'm wrong, but this was quite a a, 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 a burgeoning trend, wasn't it? Yeah, that's how I we, I write the lines. That's how I looked up to Obsky. and then there was you know he had painted a bunch of rooftops. I'd see him up, the different things, you know, different different styles and then different messages you know and i don't know if he was the same person but there used to be a roller king he would just do lines so when you when you'd ride the train it'd make different images you know it was like a, a, a urban landscape and anim, uh and anim, animation you know oh my you know, goodness that, that is you sick you know but you never knew what it was and you don't i don't know if it was him if it was the same or or one of his colleagues you know because it's just you're just the mystery back then of that landscape was was awesome because you know you had your go to couple go to songs, you know like Roxanne Roxanne and you know hip hop start hip hop started slowly it was a baby itself too so mm. you know it was growing you know did a lot of people do rooftops was that a rooftop was rooftop a a, a Chicago thing a lot of people did rooftops but a certain in, a particular individual. Uh, his name is Fest. He was the king of the South Side rooftops. He had a whole rooftop gallery. So, you know, even a couple of people under him that he brought on became Chicago legends. He's a legend himself. And uh, Fesky, Fesky, yeah, he, 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 he was king of all the rooftops. You know, he knew which, not the trip wires and and we wondered how he got up there and we'd go up there and uh, don't make it. He, he, you know, I never, I didn't meet him at the time, but I would hear rumors like, yo, don't, don't go up there and burn the spot. And, you know, back then you don't jock the spot, you know, mm. you don't try to, that was a big no, no. If somebody had a piece up there, you don't go up there and spot jock it, you know, don't jock it. If you can't rock it. Whoa. Tell it like it is. That ain't that. That's sick. But back then, graffiti, a lot of people didn't paint with each other. It was always crews, stick with your crews, you know. You know, Chicago has a big segregation uh, aura about itself and stigma. And, you know, I could say it's, to this day, it's still kind of like that. But the, the I've been trying to branch out and paint with other other people and, you know, and let bygones be bygones, and let, you know. But, but coming up, it's always been, you don't share secrets, you don't. 
you know, you stick with your certain crew and mm. you call up that way, you know. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do know what you mean. Loose lips sink ships. That's the that's the saying, isn't it? Um, I've I've experienced Chicago myself from doing shows out there, and I have such good experiences of Chicago. Um, and I think that's heightened with you know bomb the suburbs as a book. You said there was there was some disparity uh, uh, socially, um, but in Chicago, it'd be great to get an insight into all of this. Like, and you know, from South Chicago upwards, what's the, what's the demographic and, and how do the writers serve in those, you know, in those mixed environments? Yeah. To be honest with you, um, if it wasn't for graffiti, I don't think it would have, uh, knocked down, uh, racial doors and, 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 you know, graffiti, to be honest, and it, 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 we didn't look at it just like in Star Wars and, and, and in New York, like, all all race curtains dropped you know meaning that mm. if you did graffiti you forgot what color who you know that's the beauty of it you know it has its yeah. has its has its good it has its bad but it did more good now reflecting back for me than bad you know there's bad things that happen catching felonies and and doing that and then you know i had a love hate with graffiti i stopped i broke up with it it, you know, she came looking back for me, and uh, you know what I mean. It's like, yeah, I don't want to do this no more. Like, you know, but yeah, it's a, you know, it's been a love hate relationship. But overall, it did it did uh, break down doors, meaning you know, it forged relationships and friendships that otherwise you wouldn't have. Yeah, yeah. If you to coin, is there like a South Side Chicago style compared to? you know, uptown, for instance, or, you know, any of the other areas of Chicago? Is that, are there traits within the styles of each graffiti artist, depending on location? Back then, yeah. Back then, I could say, yeah, there was a south side style. There was a, a north side style. Um, basically, north side, south, there was west side style. There was, now there's Chicago. There Then, once we were developing, then it became, there was a Chicago style, but nice. now being the last 10 years, you know, when, you know, uh, art crimes came out and I would say mm -hmm. that was the beginning of where styles just started meshing and, you know, jambalaya and stuff. And he's, you know, which is obvious with anything to evolution, you know, mm -hmm. in the early days, you know, all I had to go for to go by was IG times. I had subscribed to that early on. Mm -hmm. I was for, Rest in peace, phase two. But. Rest in peace, phase two. Wow. But you've um, you're seasoned, and you seem to me to be the character. Like you say, you 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 fall in and out of love. <clears throat> but you were uh, every time you've gone back into it, you retain a level of quality and standard and style. Uh, it 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 appears to me that you know this is it, it, it's part of your DNA, and and it's curious because when when you do fall out of love with graph or any one of the street culture disciplines, any of the hip hop disciplines, isn't it funny that you really don't want to know anything about it and how almost hurt you feel that you've just had enough. <laughs> do you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, I could, I could elaborate on that. I had a friend of mine who, who it was like 2004. I started c coming back and he's like, yo, these people are getting paid for this stuff. You should, you know, you should get back in. I'm like, man, I don't care. Look what they're doing. I don't care what they're doing, man. You know, hey, you know, and it's like, uh, I had a couple of two friends. They were, they, it was 1999 because I had just gotten into construction. So I had to, you know, I had the felony for painting subways, but they took me. They're like, it was Temper and Konami. They're kings. They're subway kings, you know, like, Dope. and I kind of was coming up with them and they're like, we got a party to go to. And I was like, okay, I'll go witches, you know? And I'm like, and next thing you know, we're driving. I'm like, why are we going towards 90, 95th? That's like a yard, um, in, uh, way South, way South where we got no business blending in. And I was like, where are we going? He's like, we got to take care of something first. We're going to a yard party. I'm like, what? Yeah. You got to hit your last train. So, so that day, yeah, I was like, I hit the last train and, and it was like, it went pretty good. And I was like, see, man, you still love this shit, you know? And I was just like, man, I can't be doing this. Like, I got to keep this job, you know? <laughs> so, 
so I'd go every once in a while, and, and, you know. But at the job, I was just showing my friends, like, yo, check this out. What, you painted trains? I'm like, yeah, I don't want to lose my job, you know. Some of them liked it, you know. They're like, oh, that looks cool. Like, you know, like, yeah, I don't want to catch a felony and then not be able to get a, get another job. They're like, what are you talking about? We're in construction. Everybody has a felony. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're in construction you know? builders <laughs> builders bragging rights right there <laughs> yeah that was like do what you love kid don't stop doing what you love you know oh that's beautiful man it, it's really hard for you know even the even the term love for the the art that you do sometimes that it wavers and it's so hard to see it, your feelings to it as love it's it's a mix match of different things. Sometimes, you know, a person within the thing you love can give you a headache or, yeah. <clears throat> you know, it becomes really hard because there's beef and there's rivalry, but then equally like the passing uh, of, of our more recent friends, it makes it actually a bit of pill to swallow to think that, you know, people we're so close to can pass away like that within this thing that we love. Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, with that being said too, the passing, I, I, it opened eyes for me where my segregation eyes uh, are drowned because I saw this draft of 42, how many people he brought together from the whole city. He was a younger, newer up and coming writer, but he really, he really crossed boundaries and opened up doors with his art because even the normal person, he, his stuff was semi readable. He could get semi wild style. Like nice. seeing, you know, so he was every time he do a rooftop, everyone would talk about it. Even the yuppies, everybody loved it. You know, everybody loved his style. His oh, color. man. So at his funeral, it was two days, two day visiting. He was actually at DePaul University studying. So not all graffiti writers are, 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 are messed up in life. He was actually getting an education, you know, and he, that's just that was his little his little um, bad boy. Uh, thing was doing graffiti at night, painting subways, rooftops, and, and, mm. and getting up, you know. But he was I, a heartbreaker, you know. Yeah, a- I get you. And characters like that, what they do <clears throat> is they, they I, I guess, and this is, I'm only speaking from the kind of people that are into graph over here that, that have those kind of personalities and and traits. Um, their pers- their they have a different sort of perspective and that adds so much value to a scene, like real currency that, like you say, um, yuppies will be into it. They'll see, they'll see it. And almost like people reinvest themselves into the idea of graffiti because they've, you know, you've got yourself, a, not a poster boy, but you've got yourself a, di- a person that, that holds the, that holds the, 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 the gauntlet a little differently, don't they? Yeah, he does. Yeah, he did. I like that. I like that analogy because it's true. It's like it brought so many. I would even, I would hear people whisper at the, at the wow, like I never knew it was disorganized. You know, it's like I never knew that there was this deep like that. You know, it's like people and, 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 and with that, if you're opening up people's hearts, even, you know, with your art. It's like, I think it's amazing. At one time, I used to think, too, like, ah, it's just graffiti, you know, until one day a uh, videographer asked, do you think art moves people? And I was like, looking back, at you, I can't deny it. You can't deny that it does, you know, because mm-hmm. I would see even people look at some of my pieces, taking pictures, and I'm like, what the fuck? You know, I, I'm so used to coming up the way I came up. We were always in the shadows, man. We never said we were writers, even to other, you know, it, mm. it's like still for me to try to shake that off. Like, I still can't believe it. You know, it's like, wow, this shit went this worldwide. Like, this is, you know, I think I wouldn't even tell my uncle I paint or something, you know. Just That's to- why I respect you coming on so much, brother, because I know it was, it was, it wasn't, there wasn't any hesitancy, but I know that this is such a, a new idea that, that coming on and even expressing that you're, you know, that, that this is this is your legacy up till now. That's a real big deal, right? Yeah, yeah. That's why I took a week. I, I was like, let's push it next week. You know, I was I was wrestling with the with the notion of like, come on, you know, like you're. Not, it's like 
and I want to do Chicago right. So I, I was telling my fiance, like, all I could talk about is what I experienced and my perception. You know, I'm not here to to bash anybody because there's rivalries out here in this game, you know. But I want to be the best person to to just, you know, represent my city the way it should be. And that's what, you know, respect, style and honor. You know, for real, for real. And by golly, you are absolutely doing that right now. But let's let's remind ourselves. I mean, you've got decades and decades of experience here in the world like of Chicago, but you've also brought I mean, I've seen videos of you like repping yards in all different like Belgium and you know France and places. You know, what I mean, you you went out out, you know, Martha Cooper, you know, T Kid, you know, heavyweight hitters internationally, bro. That's a dream come true, and you know, and it humbles me a lot. And the only way that would have happened if, if without meeting uh, T Kid two thousand ten, he came for a meeting of Styles. Uh, that's when I met him, and I was just like, heard he was painting at this wall, and uh, that they had sectioned off for him. So I went to go on my man. He's one of my idols, you know. And I was mm-hmm. like, I'm like, I just got him back into it. 2000 like that year because 2009 is when afro passed away so i didn't hadn't painted for 10 years prior to that till that year i started getting back in it and then t kid comes on like let me go meet him i met t kid and ski at the media style he's like yo bro why don't you paint with us (laughs) hold on hold on hold on that sounds exactly like t Yeah, yeah, and I was like, what? And I'm like, yeah, and you're like, oh, I ain't got no paint, but we got paint, let's go, you go paint, you know? And I'm like, I'm like, you know, it's like, yo, I started painting with him, and that day, too, he's like, yo, man, people, you know, I ask about you, I always ask who I'm with or what, you know, and it's like, people say nothing but good things about you, and and he's like, I'm going to ask you one thing, I'm not taking no for an answer. I go, what's that? He's like, you're TMD from now on, we need Amazing. someone to represent. No other person to represent from Chicago because he already had turned one of my good buddies, Sewer KYM, who's a, a clean train painter too, coming up at that time. He's like third generation after uh, generation after myself. So he he was TMB, and then I kind of met him through 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 uh, Sewer myself also. So it just from that day he, he turned me TMB. It, it lit a match, you know. I was like, I've come so far. I quit. I came back. I quit again, and then. I did a 10 year hiatus. Then I come back and I'm like, nah, I'm TMB. Now I got to represent. So I started hitting the freights even harder just to get my feet wet again to before I go back to the steel dragons. So, you know, from that point on, and we've been tight ever since. And uh, T kid comes to, you know, every couple of years, he comes back to Chicago. He has family here. So, so oh. he comes, he comes, drives out here, gets down on some walls. He's even hit some steel. You know, not to incriminate him, not to say what you are, but the man, the man gets up. He's an inspiration to us all. Yeah, man. So, you know, he like, gets, yeah. he gets up and, you know, it's like, he just keeps on going. Energizer bunny. It's incredible to see. And I would imagine to be put in TNB, it must've given you like a rocket pack. It's like, yo, I'm repping this hard. Like how quickly did it go from freights to, to ever expand next thing you're in you're in you in that year just i went back to no from that from within that year i turned uh tnb i went from freights uh because it used to it used to be called uh my friends joked around because i used to do freights they used to call it the go coffee break i was going through hard times uh and uh getting divorced and everything so you know you rely on what you love i was drinking and self-medicating and mm-hmm. going down a destructive path, man. You mm. know, and it's it's like there was something missing. You wake up hungover, and something's missing, and it's like you know what? I'll go back to oh, you want to go do a freight? Yeah, I go yeah. So I do freights and stuff, and I'm like, I'm gonna go grab coffee, and I go paint a quick freight. Sometimes even solo. No, it's too cold. I ain't going. Like I'm going, and I would get instant gratification, just you know, like a kid again, seeing the pictures and and trying to do something dope this time so uh, little by little started weeding out the drinks and the drugs more graffiti started coming into play meanwhile holding my job you know and just Mm. trying to hold it together but yeah i think it was uh 2000 yeah 
the first on frame is when when T Kid I kept in contact with him. We paint stuff, and then this the unframed uh, first graffiti expo in Netherlands came about. So that would think that was um 2018, huh. 20, 2018 before the pandemic. So he had called me up and he's like, "Yo, yo, I want you to be in the show." And I'm like, "What kind of show?" Go, yeah, I'll do a show. He's like, uh, "He's like." He's like, everybody's going to be in it. They want hitters. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm down. I'm your guy. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. he's like, so then he called me back. He's like, yo, did you see the flyer? And I'm like, no, I didn't see the flyer. He sent me the flyer. WhatsApp was new at the time. He sent me the flyer. I'm like, oh, what's going on here? I'm like, it says Netherlands. Where's that? He's like, yeah, you're going to the Netherlands. I'm like, man, I just lost everything. I ain't going. He's like, oh, quit shooting doors. Quit shutting doors on yourself. He's like, they're paying for everything. And I'm like, how am I going to get off work? You better figure it out, son. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Told by T-Kid. Yo, you're coming. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, it was sure enough. All the logistics worked out. And they, I was like, I didn't get an email yet. So I guess the tickets, because we were flying to Ireland first, they went into my spam. You know, I'm not too tech savvy, you know, obviously, for my first Zoom. So, so yeah. You're doing well, brother. There. You're doing good. <laughs> it went well and the good thing that i was able to uh, pay back my stepfather because he hated graffiti i learned my color theory from him and i was like to tell him yo pop i need you to take me to the to the uh o'hare when the time came to leave he's like well what he's like remember you said this shit would never get me nowhere i go look at bam look how how you like these apples now and they're like, what do you mean? They're flying me? Oh, oh, I don't believe this. They're like, yeah. So I packed my bags, packed some paintings, and <laughs> yeah. he drove. It was like 360, you know? Like, you stuck. Yeah. I stuck in there in the trenches. Like, look, man, told you, you know? Beautiful poetic justice, right? <laughs> I love it when that shit happens. It's the best, right? Yeah, I would never seen that shit came out of left field, man. I was like, to be able to say, hey, remember you said, remember you, this shit ain't going to get, you know, it's like in the movie Star Wars, like, you know, when he catches them with all the paint, you know, and all that stuff. I think for I think for a lot of people, and, and this kind of goes back to what you were saying about the general public um, and their... I guess it's a realisation now of how organised everything is, but for, for a lot of people that are related to us or at least um, uh, part of the journey and don't quite understand it. I think once they get this window of, wow, like you're really doing it, they then invest a bit more time in, yeah, the the theory of it all, don't they? Um, One thing that actually springs to mind this morning, I was watching Joe Rogan with Rick Rubin, right? I'm not sure if you've seen that one. No, no, not yet, but Rick Rubin, legend. Legend, bro. He made that song Confusion. I just saw the video, the 80s video with New Order. That's it. The 808. Oh, yep. man. Yeah. That's the shit. Sick. And um, I got into I got into what, uh, listen to halfway through, Joe Rogan starts talking about comedy. And, um, you know, I like comedy, but I'm not like, you know, I'm not, a, you know, I'm not, I, I don't want to hear like a podcast about it, right? Um, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but as I was listening to it, the correlation between what a stand-up has to do to get himself out there is very much in keeping what graffiti writers have to do. Mm, interesting. Interesting. It's like it's like co- comedians, they'll have like a great warm-up support slot with a really famous comedian and they're doing a stadium show. But equally, they've got to go back and do you know, it's a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, you know, all these different club nights that are going on through the week and they all have different temperaments of of audience, listeners and watchers. They could be in the smallest club, they could be in the biggest club, but you've still got to show up and do it to cut your chops each time. And it kind of reminded me of like tags to throw ups to pieces, to collaborations, to productions. Do you know what I mean? Because even though you may think you're on top and you're selling a massive piece in an, in an art gallery, you still got to be on the ground and reminding yourself, about your tagging and about your dubs and throw ups, right? Yeah. I just basically, too, this weekend I went to a comedy show. So I could see, uh, I always, you know, admire, too, how this comic comes out there and, you know, it, and just puts himself out there and hopefully it takes, you know, like you said, different, 
there's different uh, audiences and different, you know, different cultures. You got to, it's got to be able to t tap into everybody at once. And, you know, like graffiti art, like you say, and the correlation between it. Well, now when I see even when I was at Unframed in 2018, I seen like old people taking, I mean, and there was like, I had my paintings up there. T kid had a painting, everybody had their painting, and they're studying them. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, I never got to see this side you know anytime i painted a piece i want to be the heck out of there and i ain't trying to come back to the scene of the crime yeah yeah totally <laughs> totally but and i was it, intrigued by how it just uh, affects everybody differently you know yeah it really does and i think just going back to my point as well is is that when you give people like you have there like you explain you know you're you're there with people that are there with cameras and they want to know they're asking questions you know these relationships that people thought they once had with graffiti it, it it's relatable to all the other arts that are out there and i don't think people actually realize how um inviting it can be once you dig deeper into the surface i agree with that it's just it's very it's a complicated art form you know and and you're always going to have uh different disputes in, in that board <laughs> One thing too right now that Chicago is dealing with that street art is not graffiti. You know, even I have friends like, yo, I like this. I told my friend you're a street art. I'm like, whoa, 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 slow down. It's yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, it's the stepchild of graffiti. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the it's the bastard child of graffiti. You know, because some of these people that rep hold a can are not the best you know uh ambassadors of our form. You know, some are, some aren't, and you know, and you. I can't blame them. I can't sit there and be the Gustavo uh, of, of graffiti and be like, no, it, it went this way and went that way. You know, sometimes I just keep my mouth shut and let it let it transpire on its own and see what it does. You know. Yeah, that's interesting. You say that. Let it transpire because I think the rest of the world is still uh, struggling with the resistance of from both sides of graffiti and street art and how this all of a sudden legitimizes, you know, decades and decades of, of culture just by calling it a different name. But I think transpiring it and letting it kind of play out. I mean, does that work in the favor of uh, graffiti writers like yourself that have been doing it for decades? I don't know. It's hard, isn't it? I think so, Cause I mean, look at the platform you're providing for us to, to, to at least have somewhat a voice and start a, a conversation, you know, the conversation will never end. If you have love for it, you know, love or true romance, a steel romance is a conversation that never ends in my eyes, because, you know, I'm going to, I don't paint as much trains as I used to, but I still dream about it. You know, I mean, I'm still, then if I'm still dreaming about it, it's still going to transpire. I just don't know whether it be next week, next month. No, no, it's for, for you know the graph gods to know dude do you dream about trains and still <laughs> absolutely man you know our crew saw crew is a uh, old og graffiti crew suck as our wasted from chicago established 1991 now 1989 when i my grandfather he always subscribed to the chicago tribune which is a, uh, a famous uh newspaper here and it's still in existence uh -huh. but they on the front cover graffiti died the last graffiti train to run the mta and i was like i was like i was like wait we got trains here and i was like man you know like it can't die you're like it's it was like we can't let it die so that's how we saw crew you know south always wins you know it was going on in the north side you had other crews too that were hitting trains and tagging trains doing throw-ups but you know saw crew we were we were uh a catalyst for starting to bring the full fill-in pieces back the blockbusters you know because we love graph that much we started studying our system and we, we we found little loopholes and you know 1993 92 we did like almost a whole yard where we went with our mentors and you know and it's like back then too to to dabble back into the history we had mentors you know like nobody just came up with the study there was already certain figures that that were a little older that had more style and you know we mm -hmm. all grew together that way 
but the, the, the trains, we love the train. We all, it was always, Chicago's always going to be a, a steel painting city, you know, first and foremost, you know. God, that's good. Good. I love the fact that you guys had mentors. Upski was definitely one of your mentors, wasn't he? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Give me a, give me some, give me some yard stories. Give me some glamorized by the way this is this is not for repeating i don't want anybody subscribing to this idea of doing it we do not endorse this on this platform but i want to hear some graph stories <laughs> okay my first felony i caught it was i think it was in 92 um november 92 out with my uh, another graffiti legend from chicago he lives in la now uh 91 Ooh. but i was with uh uh, Kira, he was an upcoming uh, bomber, and then I was with my other uh, partner in crime, Curve, and then we had a new up and comer. Uh, well, he was a seasoned painter, Temper. He he went on to become a legend. Yes, he, yes. Beyond words, of bombing everything. He's like the ghost RIS, as you know. Nice. That's the best way that I could describe him. But anyways, we were going into this yard. They call it the ghost yard too, because. There's a cemetery right in the layup off the expressway, the freeway, and right. behind the layup is a, a, a cemetery. So it always gave you spooky. It always was foggy because we would paint Chicago painted trains mostly. It was safest to paint them while, like when the weather was starting to get cold, when fall, winter comes. That's when the real deal, you could get away with it more. You're, they're less frequently to come out, the work bombs and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But that day, I remember, I wanted to, people would take backpacks, and I was like, I'm taking in, I'm taking in eight, ten cans, you know, I got to make it worth it. Yeah. So I took in, uh, I had a backpack, and then I had a, a brown paper bag, grocery bag with the little, with the little uh, strings, and I'm like, yeah, I want to be like old school New York with the paper, you know, like the yeah. old grocery bags and going yeah, yeah. in there. So I remember we went in there, we're painting, and I used to paint fast because I didn't, just the fact, not to boast that I'm a fast painter, but I was always scared to get caught. And as soon as you pay, spray the first spray on there, I'm like, that's a felony because they made Chicago painting graffiti. Anything over $500 was an instant uh, felony. Whoa. That time, it was, it was, we're the reason why, why they did that. Wow. So, so I'm painting fat caps everything i'm paying and i'm looking around and like and i had a, a, a 35 millimeter automatic pentex camera my grandfather was a photographer so he had given me my first camera huh. so i would always document and they're like we still need more time and i'm like you know what i did a quick little empty blockbuster and i'm like i'm waiting around i'm looking it's still chill and i'm like i'll start another piece i got greedy I got greedy, man. Oh, I got shit. Greedy, but I started another piece. They were already finishing, and I'm like, hold up, hold up, man. So we were back then, you'd paint 30 minutes, you know, 20 minutes. You know, you didn't, we were, we were testing the, the waters, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Some guy was looking from upstairs in the, um, in the tower, and they turned off all the power. You hear it just shut down. <clears throat> That's when you know. You're looking back now, and that's when you know when they shut the power, the chase is coming. So basically, the state troopers came and they cornered us right off the expressway. So two of us ran back towards towards the cemetery and started running towards towards gravestones. No, no disrespect. I'm like, man, being in the Spanish culture, that's the you know you don't want. I'm like, man, I'm getting bad juju for this, man. Stepping on people's graves. You oh know? my. God. <laughs> and, and <laughs> curve acura and temper they ran they did the smart thing they ran across the, the all the other expressway so they couldn't get to them but i remember the cops who came out with their guns drawn chasing myself and nike back towards the towards the cemetery and they're like freeze motherfucker you're dead motherfucker you're dead motherfucker and then i'm like they ain't shooting they ain't shooting so i'm just fucking running running Next, do you know, they jumped two two cops, grabbed Nike. It was like pitch dark. I could see and they were roughing them up. I jumped on a gravestone, maybe 20, 20 yards ahead of him. I jumped in a pine tree and I saw them. They were roughing him up. Wow. And it was, I was like, fuck. All I could, my stomach dropped. 
the adrenaline. I'm like, I had a parka with the fur on it. Yeah. Green. Here, I was up in the tree. I was just hiding. And then for like an hour, they were combing the whole fucking place. And they were like, <laughs> they were just like, I was like, man, I'm like, oh, my mom's going to beat my ass. That's all I could. That's all I would. I like, man, and my dad, they're going to fuck, dude. I can't fucking believe this shit. Yeah. Next thing, contemplating that, just shaking up there, scared. I'm like, damn, they got night. It's like, next thing you know, they're like, just give yourself up. We're bringing in the dogs. And then, and I could hear another more more radio chatter. Like, yeah, I think they got away. Yeah, I th- yeah, I think we got the one guy. Yeah, but everybody else, I think they got away. And they're like, wow. So, so different emotions, you know what I'm saying? It's For like, real. okay, after an hour and a half, I'm like, fuck, okay, I think I'm gonna, I, I think they're gonna be leaving. I'm like, they ain't bringing no dogs. I'm like shit, but, but but you gotta understand this this yard, the ghost yard, it is it's in Forest Park. It's a it's a above middle age, um, middle age demographic. So it's different. So they got time. You know what I'm saying, my man? Yeah, they got time. I do. They, nothing happens in our backyard without us. us you know, they're gonna mm. follow through to the end. You know, and wow. I was just next. Do you know? I hear I see cars coming. <laughs> Man, they brought in the German Shepherds, man. And oh, my like, God. They brought the German Shepherds in. Now it's going on two hours, two and a half hours. I know how I know that because I always kept the Casio time. Anytime we did yards, we took it like like a, a religion, you know, military. Like, okay, yeah. this should be this time. Okay, we got this. But I just never had a plan in case they swooped up on us like that. It just happened so fast, you know. <sighs> And it was like, yeah, they brought the dogs. They were sniffling around for about 45 minutes. And I'm like, then I hear they're like, all right, pack it up. We got to get these these guys back because it was coming up. Maybe it was about four in the morning. Yeah. It started and it's like in two hours or an hour, it's going to be getting daylight. So mm-hmm. it started raining a little. I just put my car park up, hood, kept it tight. And I was up there in that pine tree, just holding on for dear life, man. Like, Okay, okay. Oh my god. And sure enough, as they were like, We'll give it one more one more pass. One more pass with the dog. They put the other dogs away. Next thing you know, this dog, I could see him like twenty yards where they tackled Nike and he's starting to go crazy. Like <laughs> like Shane, they're like they're like, Yeah, what's up? What's up? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think he's got something. They're like, No, that's where we got the one guy. Let's go. Oh. Come on, it's getting cold. Man, next thing you know, fucking Mr. Detective McGee, he's shining light. He's hold on. He's acting up. He's act. Man, that fucker smelled me, man. He looked up with the flashlight. All I did, he said, "Hey, we got him. We got him. We got him, man." My goosebumps, everything. All I did, I felt sick to my stomach, man. I just let go. I, they're like, "Get down from here. We'll give you a chance." We're like, well, "Get down from here," and I just let go and fell on them, kind of. <clears throat> you know, I was just like, I couldn't hold on no more, and then. <laughs> they grabbed me like what the fuck were you doing why were you doing this shit you know they took me to the squad car and they're like where are your other friends I'm like I don't know them what do you mean you don't know them they're like, and they put the dog on me they're like put put, put Sparky on there I don't know he whispered some kind of name put, and he had, the dog had his, his jaw on my leg man but he never oh, bit like you know I was like I was fucking scared I'm like oh yeah. fuck I grew up with a German Shepherd at home my grandfather had one so it was like you know the, the, the coincidence and I'm like man this ain't fucking Skipper that's for sure a <laughs> 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 <Old> different breed <laughs> yeah he's a German that German Shepherd full breed with that fat tail but yeah he was just like where's your friends what do you mean I go I don't know they just picked me up so you mean to tell me you just get into a car with perfect strangers to go do graffiti vandalism i'm like yeah i guess they're like yeah he ain't gonna say nothing to my no, no, no. they took the dog away so so on the drive to the station and they're like they no no they pulled over they they kept me in the car they went to go uh take uh photographs of the damage and stuff mm-hmm. they're like well you're looking at a felony definitely you know how much it costs to clean these fucking cars and I'm like, no, they're like, it costs five grand. And I'm like, man, it don't cost. I'll fucking clean that shit myself. 
were like, yeah, I ended up getting the felony, but they were like, you know what? They're like, what is this? We're like, it's graffiti art. You never seen subway art, Star Wars? They're like, no. They're like, it's too bad. You guys got some real talent, man. He's like, why do you just do this? Like, this is, you, you, you know, you can go into graph. They were like, you know, they're like, what is it? They're fucking gangbangers, the partner, good cop, bad cop. Like, no, this ain't gang stuff. I seen this stuff coming up. It's, it's graffiti, you know, like graffiti. They think it's art. Yeah. So, so yeah, it was like, but I had just turned, uh, I was already of age. So they took me, they're like, they took me to lock up and then they're like, you don't get an eye bond back then the procedure post bail, but you're supposed to get an eye bond. But since it was a felony, they said, oh, you're going to the county. And I'm like, welcome your first time to the county. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, you're going to, you got to stay here overnight. And then we're going to pick you up. We'll take you to the county to go with the felons. And I was like, <clears throat> fuck. And I'm going to the fucking big boy spot, you know, not the little local fucking police. Oh, I was fucking scared. I had my Nike Prestos too. You know what I'm saying? I like, yeah. you know, like to have your, your get up, you know, be slick. You know, now you go, you don't go back then. We used to be a Air Max, or whatever, you know, hope they don't get dirty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I do know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> but that day in the bullpen, man. With Chicago's hardened criminals, fucking drug dealers, this and that. I'm in the bullpen. I'm quiet. They're like, man, what's wrong, young blood? You look, why are you so quiet? What you in for? I'm like, graffiti. Like, graffiti? How much money you make? Take gift from that. I'm like, nothing. They're like, you mean to tell me? Well, I, yeah, I was painting subway trains. They're like, man. They're like, man, relax. Just stand over there, you know. And then the people are like, yo, what size is those shoes, man? What's I need some shoes, man? They were trying to take my shoes, my fucking, you know, you know, everybody, one guy wants to be your friend and you need to fucking do a favor. What side are you going to roll with? So, oh, get, God, that sounds like an absolute nightmare. Yeah, that's why I, at that time, my like, man, fuck graffiti. I was like, man, it bit me, you know, it's like it finally bit me like shit, man. Oh. So, so with that being said, I got a, uh, they gave me a public defender and I remember I gave a fake name so they couldn't come get me out. You know, like my, my parents were like, well, my friend called my parents like, yo, he got paint. What? He's like, my dad always told me ever get caught for graffiti. I'm never coming to get you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, bet. Why didn't you call home? They're like, oh, he ain't going to come, come get me. I know, you know, they're like, and they're like. They're like, why you give fake names? We've taken your prints. It took, you're just making this worse on yourself, man. I was there for two, three days, man. And so my, you know, my prints came back. I had like four aliases. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Priors. That must have been like three or four eight. years, not three or four days. <laughs> wow. <sighs> but I remember going to, up to court. So it was the third day I had court because, man, you get caught on a weekend. You, you get caught on a Friday. It happened on a Friday. You're there till fucking Monday morning, my man. Damn. Because there's no court on Saturday and Sunday. So if you're going to do the dirt, make sure you do it during the week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> week, gonna, you know, not... <laughs> this shit's slow. This is, you know, I, 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 I really, I've got so many questions. Um, but just in terms of, you know, American American prisons are, to me, they're, they're some of the most hardest uh, prisons this side of the world, and 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 I often, I often you hear stories, you know what I mean. But I think one that is most poignant out of all of this is is the fact that they they said to you, "How much money did you make?" and and you said none, and it and and I think that's what makes it a bit of pill to swallow if you're graffiti fan or graph writer yourself is that it, of, of, as why the um the penalty is so high on being a graffiti artist you know yeah there's no there's no grammy award there's no oscar nomination you know and at that point when the guy told me what you don't make no money that's some bullshit and i was just like fucking dude he's fucking right <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You don't understand. I'm an artist. I'm sensitive. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, fuck, oh, man. But I remember, so, so I got all that happened in the, the third day. Uh, they're like, you're getting a public defender, and the public defender is like, what were you doing? Or she's like, let me see the evidence uh, photos. And I remember seeing the photos, like, 
is this what you is this gang stuff i'm like no it was a lady like this is art this is what you know subway art and stuff they're like okay this is gonna be a weird one to explain and i remember there was like two people ahead of me this girl she was in there for shoplifting in the Mm -hmm. court and there was a lady judge and they're like this is your second offense and she was caught stealing a a, a toaster from carson peary scott or something they're Mm -hmm. like 90 days in the in the in, in the in in the county jail and i don't want to ever see you again and i was like what the fuck mm-hmm. just for taking a fucking toaster i'm like yo i'm fucked <laughs> the other <laughs> really person, fucked <laughs> yeah, the other person some other dude um uh, he was caught stealing a radio fucking three time of uh, uh, offender a year and a half county jail and we'll revisit this case halfway mark to see if he's, you know, good. Yeah. Maybe get, cut down his uh, his um, sentence for good behavior. Fuck. <laughs> fucking, you know, you're like the first time <laughs> going through the fucking the, the ringer. You're, my knees are buckling. Like no, I, me, you bro. Know, <laughs> you hear a little voice like. In Spanish, andale cabrón. I hear always hear my my dad, my stepdad, andale cabrón. Querías jugar con la manteca, like you wanted to play with the grease, with the pan and the grease, huh? Now you gotta fucking sit there and sizzle in the grizzle, you know? Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> but long story short, long story short, what saved me is I was my first time offense, and they were like, you know, he's a good kid, he has a job, and. And this and that, and they're like, okay, we're gonna eye bond him out, uh, two years probation, and one year supervision. So I was like, fuck. They let me out, but I had to go check in with a probation officer every year. That's why I caught the felony. It fucked up my future for the next five years because you apply for jobs and you have to put down if you had a felony. I wouldn't put it down. I, uh, another story to go off that. I got a good job with the Hyatt Regency as mm-hmm. a dishwasher, but after they had interviewed me they're like you're too advanced how about you want to be a supervisor to the restaurant and i'm like yeah and i was making good money i got my jeep my first credit line about four months later the, the report came back that i had a felony for graffiti they're like we gotta let you go why didn't you tell us we would have worked with you i'm like yeah you know and that was when the hate yeah that was why like, i couldn't get a job anywhere you know, that set you back another couple of years because you just lost that job, and then you've got this felony still hangs over you. That's the deal with the felonies in the states, isn't it? I mean, yeah, that's what they do. You know, it's like a constant reminder of like you did some dirt in the past. You'll never be able to go forward. That way, it opens up doors for all the other goody two shoes who follow the systematic role and the climb with that. You know. Oh man, it's fucking another horrible. point to go back. When I got let out, I went back home to sneak in because I was, uh, I'd be in and out. And my parents were there. I snuck in and I came in. They're like, hey, how are you? Where you been? I'm like, oh, I went camping. They're like, camping, huh? Oh, okay. Well, how was it? I'm like, oh, it was cool. It was kind of cold. They're like, yeah, your dad was down there. I'm like, where? Where you went camping? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, Dom called us. And told us that you got locked up for painting trains and and all this, and he went down there to try to bail you out, but then uh, you gave up fake names. They couldn't figure out who you were, and I'm like, what? Damn! Oh. He never talked. To me. My stepdad's old school Mexican culture, like you know, he's not. He's a man of very few words. But he's yeah. like, yeah, his face turned white when I told him you're locked up. They're like, they're gonna eat that boy alive. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He went straight down there, so I give him respect, you know, I'm like, he did, you know, like, and he told me later on, why didn't you fucking call me? Because you told me never to call. Yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Classic parent contradictions. (laughs) So with that being said, after that, I got better, you know, I took a couple of years off. Like after the two year probation was over, the next Mm -hmm. day uh, I was painting trains again. You just fucking love it, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can't. You you don't just stop. That's the that's I think that's the that's the addiction to it. That's the, the addiction of it, isn't it? Yeah. So I just got better at it. I got I started. You know, I was more precise, more adamant about having a plan, a backup plan, the timing. You know, yeah. and, you know, I was always a, a pipe piper. Come on, let's go paint trains. You know, we got to paint them once a month. 
to keep this alive. That's you really know, 12 times a year, you know, like, so yeah, we stuck to a pretty good routine of painting trains. The saw, the saw crew, they're pretty known, you know, they, mm. uh, a lot of people that have been in our crew went on to start crews of their own and they're all, I, we call it the saw crew alumni. They bred, they bred Kings, you know, the school yeah. is better, you know, that's so dope, man. But wow, what a story. And one that I guess epitomizes a, 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 a moment in time where, you know, for the 90s, I mean, there was a couple of moments there. You said that even the the, the, the judges didn't actually, they, they were so surprised that it wasn't gang related and it was art related. That in itself is, is well, it's, it's, it's almost only too common now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, now it is. But back then to see it, to look back now, like, they were like, we don't know how to prosecute this. Like, you know, it's like, what, what? Okay, wait, can you get this? Like, judge, this is gang stuff. We all might, he was ready to give me the speech, you know, like gangs, they, they, they destroy something. They're like, no, 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 this is not gangs. This is like a club, like an art club. Where, so he's doing it without permission. And it's like, you, you know, it's like, yeah. well, you should have been. It's like, you know, you got talent, but you can't do it on other people's property, you know? And, and that's where you're wrong. Mm. So, so yeah, I was just, you know, I basically, I was lucky enough to, that, you know, look back now and I wouldn't change it because, you know, I was never a pencil pusher. I put, if I, if I would have never did that, cause I'd been a dead end job, a miserable and, you know, who knows yeah. how life yeah, yeah. It turned out, you know, but no, I'm with that. It's taught me a lot. So, well, yeah, because every mistake or anything, there are no mistakes. Because every time something like that happens, okay, it's a lesson. It's a lesson learned. Um, if you're if you're dedicated to your craft, then that will always only ever be seen as a productive response to something of a lesson. Right, and to and to shed light on the climate again, also where I came from, that neighborhood in that era, you know, I I ch I always tell people now, and if you know, if I could mentor somebody, I chose the less of the evils, man, from where mm. I came from, the South Side, Chicago, Gage Park area. Not many uh, class Victorians come out of that neighborhood, you know, you know and what mm -hmm. I've seen, what I saw, I saw it was gangs were trying to recruit me, you know, friends were that had nice things, wanted to recruit me, sell drugs and stuff like that. I chose the less of the evils. I was always trying to write on shit, you know, like, no, or break dancing, you know, so the hip hop, it gave me something to belong to, you know, mm. look back at it now, um, I probably would have been good at selling drugs and, you know, I dabbled in it here a little bit here, but, but I've seen a lot of friends get taken away, rivalries, friends become foes, you know, it's just mm. nasty, you know, graffiti rivals, yeah, I'll just go over your shit. In Chicago, we flip you, we flip your name, we line you out, we rag your pieces, you know. Not mm. until maybe the mid 90s is when shit's, you know, crews be starting to be mistaken for gangs. And, you yeah. know, you got tempers and eagles, you know, and it's like, you, just like anything, you know, it's just like like the drill game, you know, you yeah. talk shit, talk shit. It, it just, you know, we got to yeah. find love, man. We got to fucking remember that hip hop was all about love and breaking down segregated barriers you know 100 percent. i couldn't agree more it's you know i think i think graph's the last bastion of that where um gang culture also plays a part in the the, the journey of it and it, it can often be taken out of context or at least steered in a different way to what the hip-hop ethics were fundamentally about right yeah yeah, absolutely. Almost like deterring yourself, like being removed from that gang life, that journey you could go down, but actually going this way. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't change it for for anything. I'm glad that now, looking back, I mean, I got to go on tour with Mark the Cooper, with my idols, with Scheme, Henry Chiffon. Like, yo, I went full circle. It was like, it was worth it. It was like just to to be in the yard with her and, you know, looking back at it now, like if I and T Kid told me too, if you'd never been hitting trains, you'd never be here. You you wouldn't be here if you just if you just did walls. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like your journey brought you to here. You know, because I was like the second time while I was with them, like, I was like man, I can't fucking believe this, man. Yeah, I'm. I was fifty at the time. I just turned fifty one two weeks ago. 
yo, that journey was a long motherfucking journey, you know, and it had mm-hmm. little pauses here and there, you know, but I, anytime I went back right to it, I went back right to it with style, style and, and pride and, and, and everything I learned from my mentors about balance and, and you know, keeping it real on the steel. If it ain't mm-hmm. steel, it ain't no deal, you know? <laughs> I still don't do. Dude, I saw that on your hashtag and I was like, yo, that's fire. That's a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> they People still love, they tell, tell it to me and they're like i know i do i put the i put the mission with no permission or steal or no deal you know so sick so so sick brother it's been a pleasure having a chat with you i i just feel like i feel like i've been sent into a portal of chai town goodness and i want more man i hope we can do this again sometime brother it's, it's been fantastic I, man I think so because there's so many areas, you know, to dabble into. I hope I didn't ramble on Not at all. I didn't want to leave anything out. And and I want to do Chicago justice. I'm just the voice of, of the streets from back then, you know, and 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 uh, and uh practitioner of this great art form still to this present day. So, you know, we we're living and growing with with this culture. And guys like you who give us the platform, we appreciate it. My brother, thank you so much for joining me. No rambling at all. It, well, I was fixated the whole time, man. And it's like you say, it's awesome. You know, the, the scene, Chi Town sounds like it's in safe hands. Um, and again, big up Temper, big up Nike, big up all them guys that you spoke of. And and more importantly, you know, you're still, like you say, a practitioner. You're still doing it. You're still out there and operating. It's, it's a beautiful thing, and honestly. And I also want to send a shout out to my guys, Steel Team Six, uh, worldwide conglomerate of steel painters there are united for one common thing, and that's to destroy steel. They know who they are, the Steel Team Six. I appreciate it. Enough respect, Steel Team Six. And of course, 10B, um, Saw, and all the other crews that you're representing. MT, man, thank you so much for joining us, my brother. Thank you, Kyle. I appreciate it, man. I look forward to talking again soon, my brother. Yeah, man. Next time I'm in Chicago, I'll come see you for real, for real. Definitely, man. Let me know. We got you. My guy. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast. I like it was out of fashion. You know what it do? Atlantic to here. Straight back home to your ears and eyes only. Sharing is caring. You know what it do? Tell a friend to tell a friend. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither did they, all right? You stay lucky. Don't talk to anyone. We wouldn't. Nice one, MT. All right. Peace, bro. Peace. Peace.